Talitha Kumai, Talitha Kumai. Arise, woman of God. Arise, man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We worship you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to talk about betrayal. We're going to talk about people plotting against you. People trying, uh, planning for your downfall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's talk about that. Um, in the book of, I want to talk about uh, uh, Moses. Uh, they plotted against Moses. They plotted against Daniel. I think this is going to be a series because I don't want to go on too long for this one. But we're going to talk about people plotting against you. They plotted against um, Daniel, Moses, um, David. They plotted against Jesus. So you know that they're plotting against you. People are plotting against you, but they don't know who you belong to. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's not even about you. It's about who you belong to. You are in Christ. So when they come against you, they are coming against Christ himself. I did some videos about the blood of Jesus and I just kept the I kept the stuff on my face because I want you to know we are covered and washed in the blood of Jesus. But today we're going to talk about Esther. And we're going to talk about how um, Haman hated Mordecai. Mord Haman was, um, if you haven't, I'm going to set, set up the scenario here. Esther, um, no, I'll start with Haman. Haman hated the Jews. Hallelujah. I don't even think he knew exactly why he hated them, but he hated the Jews. And he hated Mordecai, especially because Mordecai would never bow to him. He was second in command to the king. So everybody who was second in command to the king was supposed to be bowed to. But, but Mordecai would not bow to him because in the word of God, you're supposed to bow to no one but God. Okay, so he won't bow. What? He was like, what? Because everybody, you know how people start stuff? People want to start stuff. People around you want to see your downfall too. They want to see what's going to happen. So they ran to Mordecai and said, I mean, they ran to Haman. Because Haman didn't know. But he said, they ran to him and said, oh, Haman, there is a man here who does not bow when you come in. And, and, and to find out that this man was a Jew too. So Haman put the plot. He plotted against the Jews. <laughs> that was your that was your first and last mistake, boo. Because you, when you plot against the Jews, Jesus anointed. Hallelujah. I am anointed of the most high God. And everybody that's covered in the blood of Jesus is anointed. You are anointed by the most high God. Ha. Huh? So when they mess with you, they messing with a Jew. We adopted, boo. We are adopted. So they was messing with a Jew. They messing with you and they messing with me. Hallelujah. And um, and even if you want to say, we, hey, we Gentiles, we're adopted into the kingdom. The Father says it. So what happened to Haman? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Haman got invited to a, a, a meal with the queen. Now, he'd been plotting. He plotted, so, he plotted so much that he was about to get all the Jews killed and all of their... Um, businesses taken, their money taken, children tur um, turned into slavery if they were not killed. Because the rule, uh, the law that the king had set, the Jews had no recourse. But God always has a ram in the bush. They did not know that Esther was a Jew. Hallelujah. And let's read about it. Let's, let's take a little walk on the people who plot against God. Because this is not just for um, the biblical times. This is for now. For those people who are plotting against the children of God, you will be, you will pay. Oh, you will pay. And not because we want you to, because the father says, do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And we all are his anointed. So when you come against us, you coming against the most high God. And this is what happens to those who come against God. Okay. Oh, yeah. I wanted to set up something else, too. So Queen Esther asked Haman and her husband to come to dinner with her. And so they were coming to dinner with her. Um, but this particular day when Haman woke up, the king asked, he said the king couldn't sleep all night. He just could not sleep uh, the night before they were going to go to the second meal. He could not sleep. And he woke up. He said, um, 
Give me the an the uh, the annals. The annals. The annals is the book that they read of what happened or what the um the people did uh to bless him. Or it's just the annals was the things that happened. So it just talked about that. So um anyway, they brought the annals to him, and he was looking it over, and he found that Mordecai had saved his life. So then, so he was like, hmm, I want to do something to bless this man because it says in here, I didn't do nothing to bless him. Look at God setting it up. So the next morning, uh, Haman comes in to see King Xerxes, which is Esther's husband. He comes in to see him, la, 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 la. And the king was like, what should I do with a man I want to bless? And Haman was like, there's no one he wants to bless more than me. He wants to bless me. So he said all of this stuff. I'll talk to you in a minute. If that's okay. So he said all of this stuff and um, of what he should do to the man he wants to bless. So King said, the king said, okay, all that you said, I want you to do all that you said and um, don't leave anything out and do that for Mordecai. <gasps> he was like, <gasps> that is his mortal enemy, his mortal enemy. And he had to go out and said, this is what happens to the man the king wishes to bless. And he had to yell it out, and and Mordecai got to ride on a on on a horse or donkey probably or something on a horse and wear the king's robes, and 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 Haman had to do this. And I don't keep in mind Haman had built some gallows for Mordecai because he was going in that morning to ask that he hang Mordecai on the gallows. So he was like, oh my goodness. So he did all that. Then when he finished, he went home to his wife and he told his wife what happened, and they all got scared. They got so scared because they realized that Mordecai the Jew had great power because he had saved the king's life. So just when Mordecai had gotten home and told them what happened, there was a knock on the door and it was the king's guards to come take him to the to the dinner with Esther. And so now this is where I think I'm going to pick up at when they went to the meal with Esther. But I want you to understand that Haman was plotting so bad against the Jews. He was plotting against God's anointed. He was plotting against God's children. And this is what happens to those who plot against God's anointed. So I'm telling you this so that you, woman of God and man of God, stop worrying. Put your trust in the Lord because he already sees. The minute you let go and let God, he got you. He has you. Now, Esther um, fasted. But anyway, okay. Yeah, Esther fasted for three days and three nights, okay? Okay. So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. And as they were drinking wine on the second day, the king again asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? Queen Esther, what is your petition? What you want, boo? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Talk about favor. Hallelujah. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your mad if I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition, and spare my people. Hallelujah. This is my request. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed, and annihilated. If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet. Because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, who is he? Where is he? The man who has dared to do such a thing. Esther said, an adversary, an enemy, this vile Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. The king got up in a rage. He left his wine and went out into the palace garden. But Haman, realizing that the king had already decided his fate, stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. Just as the king, just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. As soon as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face 
they covered Haman's face. Then Harbona, one of the, the eunuchs, the, yeah, the eunuchs attending the king said, a pole, now listen to this. This is what I want you to know. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs attending the king said, a pole reaching to a height of 50 cubits stands by Haman's house. He had it set up for Mordecai, who spoke up to the who spoke up to help the king. Hmm. The king said, "Impale him on it." So they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai. Then the king's fury subsided. Hallelujah! I'm gonna read that again because all your enemies, this is what's gonna happen to them. The king said, "Impale him on it." So they impaled Haman. On the pole he had set up for Mordecai. The pole that your enemies are setting up for you, they will be hanged on it in the name of Jesus. The pole that the enemy is setting up for you, they will be, held, be hanged on it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you. God, I thank you that every enemy of, 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 the, of the most high God, of, of us, Every enemy of his people will be hanged and impaled on the pole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So, God, I thank you. God, I praise you. That's so deep. I want you to get it. I want you to get it because sometimes you think you got to fight your battles. Sit back and let God do his thing. God knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you, and he's not going to let the enemy come in and do something to you. He's going to let that enemy set up his plan, and he's going to be hanged on a plan that he has set up for you. It says it right there. The king said, impale him on it. So they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai. I need you to get that word and get it good. That is, what is that? Um, Esther 7 and 10, I think it is. Yes, Esther 7 and 10. That's deep. So, I want you to be encouraged today. No, we're not praying that. I'm praying that my enemies get saved in the name of Jesus. But if they don't get saved, they're going to get impaled because I'm sitting back and letting God do what God does. He protects me. He covers me in the blood. He keeps me safe. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you. My most high God is with me. He covers me. He protects me. He impales my enemies. So to God be all the glory, the honor, and the praise. I love you and I bless you. Hallelujah. And there's not a thing you can do about it. So, um, yeah, so subscribe, um, hit that like button and subscribe and, and share it. Share this video with at least two or three other people. Or if not more, share this video and let them know whatever they are going through, God is going to make a way. So I love you and I bless you. Um, oh yeah, don't forget, this is going to be a series. This is going to be a series about they plotted against you. <laughs> love you and I bless you. Bye.